Good morning and welcome to Manic Fishing on this real windy Thursday. So today I'm going to be going down and doing a video with John Little on uh, uptiding. Obviously we're not going out in this weather. He's going to talk me through some of his tips and little tricks that he's got and how charter boats manage to do this uptiding with six, eight anglers on. So I'm hopefully I'm going to learn quite a bit from this video today. Stark of that wind. Yeah, hopefully I'm going to learn quite a bit from this video today. Um, I've been uptiding for quite a few years, but uh, with very little success. So John's going to show me it through. Obviously, John's a match angler and has a lot of the match fraternity people out with him. So uh, hopefully he'll give you a better look at it and uh, we can all learn from this. So I hope you enjoy the video. I'll just wait for John to turn up. Then we'll walk on to Manx Bell and we'll do this little video. Yeah, I'm here now with John and Malcolm um, on Manx Bell and uh, Malcolm's just going to explain uh, his rig and his... Uh, he, I can actually draw it on paper just as well, but OK, that's cast out, say 45 or more degrees up outside of your cone of disturbance. That goes down. Keep letting your line out so that it's running out. Eventually, your weight's up there your line is going to go back behind the boat and this bow of line is being pulled tight by the tide and you can put your rod in the rest and wind it down until the rod is sort of nicely like that and that's perfectly perfect what usually happens then as soon as you do get a bite that releases the weight the rod shoots up there's your bite indication straight so the, the line go like the rod goes slack yep. the line goes slack yep. and such and we'll wind like the clappers and until you catch up with it, you see when you feel it there, and say that's uh, that's all that lug worm. So you got you got a pedal there. Yep. So when I first started fishing with Malcolm years ago, this would be typical how Malcolm would fish across time. He was very very successful with it. He used them um, Colorflex blanks um, yeah. by Mark Two Angling. Uh, Mark Barnett used to make them, and um, they worked a treat. Um, funny enough, this led here. I still use these to this day. Um, I find them the best leads for out, out of here. Um, they're five ounces. It must be the gauge of the wire. Oh, it's, the, no, it's, a good, it's a strong gauge wire. They hold in anything. I don't have any any problems. No need to go any heavier. So you don't need to do a twelve ounce or anything like no, that. No, no, no. I find these this particular lead works an absolute treat. So you've got about six foot of line there, Malcolm, yeah, for your for your trace line. Primarily, it was in shallower water. If you're out here quite often in much deeper water then obviously you've either got to cast further up to allow for the weight to go down otherwise once once the weight's gone past the boat you won't hold you know it's just run back and the whole uh, the whole object really of up tiding is to keep that that bait away from the boat uh, that's right yeah and uh, and like i say and, and keep it's good at bite indication because your rod is actually bent over you th you know nice and tight yep. and all of a sudden she'll come up yep. as, soon as, as soon as that weight moves pressure comes off the line and bug comes up and then you have to sort of wind up quite a bit in to catch up with it yep. yeah yeah so a lot of wind line fast out. and you suddenly well, you feel the bug yep. and lift into your yep. fish yeah i mean but it's it's almost like a self-hooking Right. And that's it, cod, cod every chuck. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> and let's say, Malcolm would use the very same sort of tackles you use, Mark, with a, a, a traditional sort of up tied rod and a multiplier. That's yep. uh, how he would fish it. I'll come at it from a different angle, and um, I'm not saying that what I do is any better or, or, um, or well, I, I know it all. The thing is, it's fine when you're on a private boat. It's you only got yourself to wear. On a charter boat, most charter skippers would throw you overboard. Yeah. They don't want yeah. your casting, you know, they have too many broken windows and things. Yeah. Whereas John's idea with the longer rod, underarm cast is much... And that's much more of a match yeah. angle. So, so, so of my experience has been fishing same same technique as Malcolm was describing here. And then when I slowly got into the match fishing, um, competition fishing, I saw more and more... Um, um, guys using much longer rods uh, and I did the, did the same myself so the idea of the of the of the longer rods for if you're talking about specific, specific specifically for up tiding is um you use them with a fixed ball reel right and you put them and um, with the with the competition rules there's no the leads are not allowed to be cast from inside the boat 
so therefore you have to swing underarm cast so a four or five meter rod will make uh, that very very easy and what sort of distance could you get if you wanted to at least f further than, than, than I, I would you I, yeah. I, I do yeah i think further than and that. i suppose using a fixed ball you're not going to get the overrun like you would overrun, with a no, multiplier no. I mean, I, I've only ever you I only ever use these for sort of down tiding. The, I've got the same reels. I use these pen fathoms for yeah. for the same for this up tide rod and for um, my down tide in. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've I've I do use fixed balls, but they're just on my lure yeah. rods, and, you know. And even the guys, even though they draw a stern post, so if if because they, they draw positions for on a match, even if they're at the back there, they'll still cast. Oh, uh, down tide very much what Malcolm was talking about about this this scare zone um, they'll cast well away from the boat and will the lead still grip in if you're yeah, going I mean, down if, if you're going down tide there's no need to use a grip lead no um, but they, they, you still can do it and, and also use the same tactic I suppose the lead will boat. drag that way well, and then hook in anyway will if, it? if you do a big bow the same thing even from the back you'll end up you can still fish down tide in that method yeah without yeah. having to, to increase your lead too much so is could you if you were going out to do a, an up tide session could you get six anglers on your license for six are you I here? lost for eight eight but yeah. you normally fish six uh, no fish seven for a comp. seven yeah fish so seven a could they all up tide they could or? do the, the, the only one who's going to struggle is the, the center of the of, of the back so he's going to, going to struggle he or she's going to struggle so the best mark would be place so, would be these so, two so, positions so, so it, on a match competition that's number one yep and typically that would be known as number eight around, around here if you date anglers on board right so number one and, and number eight are fancy positions uh, and most for down tiding or up tiding? For, for, for up tiding and across you've got a big area to cover. Yep. The hardest, harder places are the ones in between. Yep. So obviously if you've got a stern post, there, there is as well. You can still, you can still um, uh, cast up tide from a stern, stern post. Yep. Longer rods give you all the, all the options. Yep. Uh, Shall I show you a couple of reels I've got? Yeah, please, yep. So let's a, have a look at some of so, I mean, once again, I'm not. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. I've got no no interest in, in, in any of that whatsoever. But I, I, I'm a fan of Shimano's. Yeah. Um. I've never, they've never let me down. We're talking about fixed ball reels here, and um, this is an old Tigra, um, which you know is a great workhorse. Probably my favourite. Let's have a look at this one. Is this one here? This, this, this. Yep. My favourite here. It's also Shimano. Um, it's a bullseye. Bullseye. Yeah. That feels slightly less heavy than that one. Yes, it is. Oh, it's uh, a bullseye. Um, probably the bullseye is probably at least fifty percent more. Probably maybe even twice the price of the of the old Tigra. This one is. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's an expensive reel here. You always fish braid. I personally always fish fish braid. But yep. I've, I've seen guys fish fish nylon when they're up tied and prefer nylon. Um, I, I personally just used to braid, um, and always fish a leader. Yep. So at least twenty five foot a leader. I change the leader every every trip. And so, what what thickness a leader? Because that show, was the I'll other show you thing. What, what I use. So as I say, I've been up tied him for about. 15 years but i've never had real any great success with it yeah so at all so i use this sky blue two bettini sky blue um i say i use it i've noticed that 90 percent of the match anglers use this for, for the leader, that for leader? Was yeah that it's only 0.4 what? so it's only 0.4 um breaking strain um i can't remember malcolm off the top of my head it's on the on the front there like 30 30 um, 18 kilos, so what's that, 40 pounds? 18.7 kilos, 40 pounds. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Pounds. so that, that, that's 0.4. Well, that looks really thin. That is really thin. It's 0.4, and um, if you look at most 0.4 lines, they are, yeah. they, they are rated... They are rated like you yeah, know, so like that's 30. Pounds. Mine is our mine cigar, yeah, a fluorocarbon, yeah, and my, that's much thicker than that, yeah. And would you do that all bright? Yeah, that's, not that's forty. That blue. Yeah, yeah, that's much thicker than that. Yeah, yeah, this, this is real top, top, really. And really it's good. strong. 
very, very, very strong. And the, the idea of the long leader, don't be wrong, everyone... Because it's not like you don't need a shock leader as such, like a beach. No, everyone's got their own, their own opinions. There may be some parts of the country where they fish without leader. I know there are, are some. But I personally find here much, much better. I, I, I prefer to use a leader. I like the, the, the leader to be... This will lie flat on the, on the bottom. Not, uh, nylon sinks. Yeah. So this was this was lie flat on the bottom. So if there's any rough ground at all, this got more chance of withstanding any damage to it. Um, plus, the side of the boat is easy to is it's easy to handle to put up rather than braid. Um, yeah. So that I'll, I'll, use, I'll use at least you know like I'll look at that 25 foot of that is what I, what I would use. I'm going to back on. Back. Okay. We well, thanks on? very much, Malcolm. Well, anyway, yeah. Uh, cheers for that. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a shout before we go. Okay. 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 I'll yep. keep that rig. <laughs> I'll sell it. We we'll sell it to you. <laughs> sell it to you. Yeah. <laughs> in, in actual fact, I'll show you. I'll show you something. Which, when I was beach fishing, um, a bit of my famous trace. Now this is a very special line. I shouldn't even let you see what made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm tied knots for years now. Just a double over. And look, now I'm just going to show you, if you, you, you your main line. Oh, that's it, yeah, just your leader. Yeah. Right. That's sky blue, but. Now that, that would. Thin, isn't it? Yeah, point, point 0.4 at, at 40 pounds. Yeah. That's that's what you're paying for. So am I having that roll? No, <laughs> so I haven't got many left. But I'll tell you where. And that's can, not a bad price either, is it? I'll tell you where you can buy them from. You, there's only a few places we'll stock it. Weymouth Anglin always have it. Um, the, don't get me wrong, there's no other places. Weymouth Anglin will have it. And Brett Lummis's shop, uh, Lagoon. Lagoon, Tackle. yeah. He'll, he'll have it for you. Right, yeah. Right, I'll show you that's. That's hanging down from your rod. Yeah. Straight to the rod. With this, and this is what I fished off the beach like this for all my all my early years. Right, through the loop like that. Yeah. Just pull that up and go back again underneath. Let's like say if I had my specs on, I could see what I was doing. There you go. Perfect power loss there. Right. Now that that's just perfect power loss. Yeah. When I used to fish Dungeon S in the sixties, it sort of go and it shelves and then it goes yep, and shelves. I remember it, yeah. And you find that your line would cut down through the thing. Now you get decent fish on, you can't pull it through the bank. You know, it's just yep. the, what was happen was you get a decent fish on, that will slide down. All right. And keep everything in a straight line. So this. The, and then you can just readjust that. It's almost like a uh, when you, a stopper. When you, when you come to do it, do it again. Yeah. That, and that's that's, that's a good idea. Isn't that's it? on there tight enough. Yep. There's no swivels, no yep. booms. It's simple. Yeah. Yeah, Very that's good. all right. Very good, mate. Well, so the only difference is these is that I made these up so that you could just clip them on. Yep. Yep. And basically, it's the same thing. Yep. And you've got a fixed loop rather than a sliding one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. Never let me down. I've had a many, many sort of between 20 and 30 pound gods. Yeah. Never never failed. That's when beach fishing was beach fishing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll send some of them pictures. We'll put some of them pictures in on this, uh, you know, on the video later. That, that's... You can't see the name on it now. It's called Bayer. All right, okay. And, um, Remember that, Mark? Buy a pearl. Buy a pearl on, yeah. Back in the 50s and 60s, the, that was a match fisherman's dream. Um, all, all the, um, Even the 70s was that one. I used to buy it. Yeah. Henry Aikens. The, uh, all German monofils. Yeah. Right, Mark, should I show you a couple of these rods? Right, okay. All right, then, Mel, thank you very much. Yeah, take yeah, care. Right, so, so John's just going to show us some of these rods that he uses. Yeah, so the, um, once again, I'm not professing to be the top man in this or anything, far from it, but um, this is what I observe the match anglers use when they come on board, and these are the rods that I use as well. Um, once again, I've got no 
nothing to be going I'm not promoting these rods at all so there's actually two makes that the guys you tend to use uh, one is Artico I busted that eye there earlier Mark. Um, one is Artico and, and the other one is Tubertini so are they uh, they are all uh, like uh, like a travel rod you no, know? no. Uh, they're, they're, no. All, they're not all telescopic no. no this one's quite interesting this particular rod um, it's partly telescopic and then the, the top part's not and um, you can see what it is Mark it's um, uh, extreme power um, 3.6 metres so um, it's a this long is, rod uh, and yeah. on this world it's a, it's a short rod but 3.6 they're probably the most versatile rod that I've got you can use them up tiding down tiding drifting um, etc uh, lovely rods funny enough the tips with them um, the tips are obviously good but I've I've noticed other anglers do it as well and I've done the same I changed the tips to a gravel so I actually use a gravel tip there's one there they're fine tips yeah yeah um, so Artico I think the the only place I know that it brings them into the country is uh, Blue Zone. Um, it's an online company um, based down in Cornwall, or down in the West Country at least. So is this what most of the match anglers use? They either use Artico or Tubertini. Yeah. Not necessarily this model, um, but this particular model is one of my favourite rods, the most versatile rod I've ever come across. And how much are they? Um, I don't know if I might. I would think... 250 300 quid oh, so it's not it's not I'm, I'm, OTT I'm, no I'm, not I'm guess, like I, no not <laughs> no if, if I if I show you this particular rod here this is a, a later version I've got I've got the original ones as well this is Atlantic Tubertini Atlantic now I must say the, this rod is probably used by more match anglers on the south coast than any any other rods that I, that I know so the, the likes of Ray Barron and Steve Batchelor. Yeah, I mean, I mean Ray's Brett. always got one of those articos. Right. Always got one of those. That's his favourite rod. But then um, all the other lads would definitely, and Ray will have one of these as well. Um, so for me, for up tiding, these are the perfect rods. Um, cheers, mate. That's a perfect rod there. Yeah. Two of the Atlantic. And so what will that cast? Is it a casting? Because, yeah, I, mean, I mean, I noticed with my one, it's like 125 grams to yeah, 300 grams, yeah, it th says. This has, got, this has got a maximum of 1,000 grams on it. Right. So, but that's two pound. I mean, a... what would we charge two pound for? No. You know, um... Oh, where's the top? So the, uh, oh. Once again, it comes, oh, it comes with so tips. then you put your own tip. Yeah, have a, have a look You've got there. tips in what? there. They, they, they come with tips. And how long are these rods? That's four, they're four metres. So what's that? 12 yeah, it's 13, yeah yeah i mean a lot of guys will use five meter rods. i've got a five meter rod there as well to show you as well um a bit tight in so this it will slide down mark it'll be inside it'll be inside oh yeah there you go and so do you use different so there's two different types in there or yeah. are they both the same no they'll be different there'll be a there'll be a, a medium i think you've got a medium and a heavy there oh okay um yeah, so you've got a, that's a medium and a heavy. Um, but, you know, once you, my thing is, once you start using this sort of gear and understand it, it takes a little while to get used to it. You won't go back to using traditional rods. No. For this type of fishing. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't use anything like this for wrecking or, no. or, 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 or generally lure fishing, although you can do. You want to hold this Atlantic F1 Atlantic. You want to hold it all day. No. It's, a, it's ideal for casting across the tide. And one important thing I, I, with, with these is this style of fishing for me, Mark, is you fish to your watch as well, same as you would on the beach. And the idea that your your bait's going to be washed out. If you use ten minutes, for example, think your bait. If you haven't got a bite within ten minutes, wind it and rebait. Quite often, of course, you have a small fish hanging on there. Yeah. As Malcolm yep. says, the ideal situation is you get a drop back bite and the whole thing. Yeah, that's ideal. Yeah, but quite often you watch you get. Because I remember years ago when I used to fish on the beach, I used to sort of go every fifteen minutes, you know, and work my bait out so I'd have, yeah. you know, four lug an hour or whatever I was yeah, doing, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's the same sort of principle. Um, work on these, but but these 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 ones say 
with a fixed ball reel, they lend themselves to that. I got a bit windy today to, to show you, but, <laughs> but it's, they lend themselves to, to, to cast it underarm and getting it well away from the boat. Yeah, um, yeah. And it, it, although we term it up tide fishing, realistically a lot of it is across the tide. Yeah. So if you're in positions, so if number one is is um, in this corner here and number four in the stern there, yep. two and three, if they want to fish across the tide, they must go underarm. So they've got to, so can they still, sw I suppose because the rod's out that further, it gives them that arc to, to exactly. be able to flick it out. Exactly. So it, the lead must stay out the boat, yep. outside the boat. It's a customer, of course, still tell the people around you I'm casting, but most of them will do it. Other match anglers will drop their tip to allow you to do that yep. and get away from the boat. Yeah, because I mean, I remember years ago when I used to go on charter, well, funny, out of here as well. Um, and, uh, you know, the rule of thumb, if you were up tiding, was... Uh, Casting now, you know, and then you do it, but you'd have this this lead hanging down, and sometimes yeah. a four foot trace. Yeah. I mean, quite often you'd either catch someone's coat, hopefully not their rear or yeah. whatever, and and then when they're swinging the leads in, it, it was hard work. I yeah, mean, so for me on Lady Margaret, I mean, it's not a problem. Totally different in a private boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, when you've got a, a you know a boat of anglers on board, it's very different. But this is all all safe techniques. This these rods are all. Continental. They're all these are Italian rods, um, and their style of fishing, not the up tidiness, but the style of fishing with long rods poking out and finding areas, um, stem from there. But it does get you the idea of casting away from the boat, um, even with shorter rods. But obviously, these four and five meter rods are, 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 are much better for it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we're hoping to, um, I'm hoping to get out and do a video out with your match anglers we tried to sort something out yeah. last year but it never come to play so i'm going to uh, do a video on that and them styles uh, they're a little bit secretive some of these match anglers so yeah, yeah. we might not be able to zoom in on the rigs or whatever but it'd be nice just to go out there yeah. and see because it is a different style of fishing and i mean what a lot of people call uh, sort of pesky fish i know i do the dogfish and that are high score a high scoring can be, yes. fish you know yeah, yeah. and the gurnards and things like that i mean they're great to catch but you go out there specifically to get those gurnards yeah and get the it depends on, on all the matches have different scoring systems but um typically you know like some of the matches like the home nations or the eastbourne spring challenge that we do here that's just catch as many fish as you want because all the fish as long as they're over 20 centimeters are going to count yeah yeah other other um, leagues scoring systems like the Species League do what's called a five and five. So, if, say for example, a bass is worth ten points. The first five are worth ten points each. Yep. The next five are only only worth one point each. After that, they don't score. Yeah. So you have to adapt and and, uh, and learn the the differences about how, how you catch a gurnard, how you catch brass. But then and I suppose dip, obviously dip, 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 dip it's, it's more where yourself puts them on the. On yes. the ground, you know, yes. of yeah. of it, you know. Yeah. So with my with my up tie broad and and set up here, then um, I mean, obviously, I've got this one. I've had it quite a while. This yeah. um, this is uh, any fish anywhere up tie broad, and I got it with this reel. So I mean, obviously, you've seen the last couple of videos that I've done. I've not been super successful with it, yeah. um, uh, and I'm just getting a little bit. Uh, I think overcomplicating things with my rigs and other bits and yeah. pieces. We can have a talk through some of yeah. these rigs and and the best sort of Certainly. way for me to do it. People all over the country have their own their own rigs, etc. I'll, I'll just give you some idea. Yeah, I mean, I was of... I was looking through my stuff and I had a I got my old rig wallet out and I had I've got some in here that actually says up tides that I must have made up. As I said, I have been. Yeah. I've been fishing up to, well, I haven't been fishing up tide, uh, um, but I've had an up tide rod for about yeah. 15 years. And as I said, really and truthfully, I've never, I've never, ever had any success. Um, you know, I'm not saying I haven't had fish, but I've never had any fantastic success. And I know you said to me about when I fished Portsmouth, that sea angling classic in them four or five, meet, uh, five knot tides, you know, the better way to do it is to up tide. Up tide, 100%. 100%. Yeah, because I was using two, two pounder lead, yeah. you know, and in the end of it, me and Danny, we were using almost conga rod setups because of the tumbleweed coming through yes, and everything. Yeah, it yeah. was horrific. Yeah. I mean, what, what, I don't, I'm not sure whether the guys there who use leader or not, 
Um, I would think they do. I know some of the England guys that fish up there, and they, they fish with a leader. Yeah. So, um, just I, I, as I know, I say, I'm not trying to sell anything by Tubertini. Tubertini no. do sponsor the England teams, which is why, probably why I see a lot of this stuff. But that phantasm is what most, of, I'm not talking so much about the boom rigs, but most of the rigs, the guys will make up with phantasm. Yeah. That's, point that's th- a fluorocarbon. Yeah. And look at that. It's 0.37. Um, and that's rated at um, 11 kilos, so it's 25 pounds. 0.37, that's that's very fine line. Yeah. You know, um, most guys were using point, you know. Let's have a feel of that. Yeah. 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 So, now, one of these spools is only like 25 meters. So yep. 25 meters of line there, so you've got to be using it. And how much is that? Quite expensive? It's quite expensive line, so I'm not yeah. trying to say anything. But no. I mean, I use just the seagull, you know, that's all I've yeah. ever used. Yeah, se- seagull's for... a great line. Um, and if I, if I give you an idea, I'm not sh- I'm going to be glass on over, Mark. <laughs> give you an idea. Uh, this is just some of the, some of the rigs. So this is up tied. This, is a, this, this rig, you could use it up tied, down tied, drifting. But I would certainly consider putting this across the tide at certain states of the tide, depending on what, what the tide's doing. As the tide starts to ease off a little bit, I would, might switch to something like this. Is a bit more baby little looks. Yeah. So, so there you go. I mean, it looks like a work of art. No, that's <laughs> that's um, and, and these these hooks. I'm just looking at these hooks. they fair enough. These these hooks are Tubertini uh, series two. Um, but you know, on that principle that you can, you can only, you know, you can catch um, big fish on little hooks, but you can't catch. But see, I mean, hooks. that is, I think that's even smaller than I would use for bream. That's a perfect bream. Yeah, yeah. So let's see if I can get this up. Show this there. I'll show some. Sorry. Other bits in the same mark. Yeah. Let's just see if I can just show this. I don't know if you can see the size of that hook. I mean, that's in respect to my finger now and i see you've got the tag end on you whip these on then they're spade ends yes yeah 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 Yeah, i never got my head around those (laughs) yeah yeah but they're um it's certainly when i was roach fishing years ago you'd notice the difference with you know um using a spade end on a presentation yeah so and do you think presentation matters for for 100 percent yeah yeah, hundred percent. It's presentation, presentation, presentation. It's the be all and end all, really. Um, so, but the dogfish wouldn't mind what? The do- no, but even, no. It, even dogfish can be funny on a yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Typically, in a match, you look for a dogfish. I mean, I'm trying not to catch them, so yeah. I just need something that 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 now, doesn't catch them. Once again, <laughs> I'll give you an idea. This is the only ideas on 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 some boom rigs. Um, and this is this is the uptide side we're, we're, we're this, looking at. Yeah, yeah. This is what although I've, you yeah. can use this in a different way, because um, I know you always said to me about you know booms, these these some of the twisted booms and the other traces. So would you? I mean, how I've got my uptide um, thing here. It's a little bit awkward to show in here because obviously it's fifty three mile an hour winds here. So I mean, I've got mine mine here set up as a, uh, as a flowing trace as a flowing trace yeah, yeah. so um and then what you know because i'm just really trying to keep it simple yeah. um so, so i mean I, I, I personally i personally wouldn't use that i wouldn't use a boom or a flowing trace no for up tiding for up tiding. i wouldn't do that there's plenty of, ang- plenty, of, plenty of anglers that do fine but i would it's just to me it's just one more thing to tangle right and so i tend to fish pattern osters so you do away with the boom and and the bead and just have the snap uh, swivel so you could collect yep. your and what I do is too. typically I'd say attach it straight to there there yep this is, is not a great example but it's an example it says that of, that's the so I notice you've got a lead in between that yes so so the idea is the lead's going to be on this end here this yep. boom I, I don't think like so you'd it. have like Malcolm's gripper on the end on the end there yeah so this one here doesn't need a lead in there no because. It's, it's, it's weighted by the by the the, the, the lead. Yeah. But this here, you want this rig to lie flat on the bottom. Right. And that helps to lay it flat on the bottom. Yeah. You, you know, if it's a two hook match, you have a two hook. If it's a three hook, you have a three three hook 
Boom. So, and you've got these all so you can just switch these around. Yeah, that's a very interesting point on this, is that some guys will, will cut the, the swivel off of these booms yep. and tie directly to it, which is fine for some fishing, but you start catching those of whiting or... And then it'll twist up. Pat and then they twist. So uh, can I just show that? Yeah, so, let, me get a bit, let me find some better examples. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at it and criticising them. I think, no, that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> that it's much right. neater than the ones I'd ever make. Um, you personally would use a pattern oster, uh, like a weight on the bottom and have it with... Yeah, I mean, occasionally... So does it matter about I'm not being... You don't have to clip them down. We're not on about... Because really, with that tiding, you're not looking at getting... You know, as long as you're away from the boat, you know, 50, 60 foot, yeah. is happy days, isn't it, really? Yeah. It doesn't have to be... You know, it's not like you're on the beach and you need to clip everything down no, no, no. to get that distance. No, no, I see what you're saying. No, no. So here's an, another example here, Mark. S same sort of setup. Yeah, let's see if I can show that. Yep. Sorry. So here it is here. So we've got, you've got a weight in the little ball lead in the middle. A ball lead in the middle there. So there's a swivel on the top that you clip to. So why is there two knots here? Just to stop that, just to stop that swinging. Right, okay, yeah. 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 So you do a knot instead of a... Um, some of my rigs are, are crimped. Yep. Some of them are knotted. This is 80 pound. Yep. So it's, it's, a, it's, just, it's heavy, heavy duty stuff. Yep. Um, so you'd always use 80 pound as a... As a yeah, or 60. Yep. 60 to 80. Yep. Yeah, I've got, I got, I got heavy on there. And then with your hook length, what is that? Is that's, that the same? That's, that's, that'd, be, that'd be lesser. That would yep. be lesser. That's 0.5. Yep. yep. So, so this, is, this, this looks like a place rig. Yeah, yeah, but they track doggies. Yeah, doggies will doggies will have that. And Gernard? Yeah, the, the doggies, Gernard, do, doggies like a bit of bling, generally speaking. Yeah, um, a little blade. So you've got you've got a swivel there, and you've yeah. put shrink like I'll a shrink tube in over that, just to keep it tidy. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So then you let it go on the bottom here. Yep. So that's a trace there, like yeah, that. That's it. So it's there. So and the key is to get to lay flat on the on the on, on the on the seabed. Yeah, and obviously the weight of that uh, boom as well, that's got a little yes. bit of weight there as well, which will hold it down. Absolutely. So and if I show you now, and then I mean you could have this as a as a general sort of uh, rig, and then if you were fishing for rays, say, yep. you could just put a bigger hook. Exactly. On. Yeah, yeah. If you were fishing for cod, or whiting, or bigger bait, whatever, bigger hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And would you have a bigger snood? No, I keep the snood short. So that's only about six inches long. Be, oh, I see. If you go, if you go longer than the boom, all oh, right. You know, I see. Tangled. This, I see. This, so this it's is, almost like a spreader bar or a fair where you wouldn't is, have your hooks yeah, this is to all, touch the lead. This is almost tangle free. Right. It's okay. It's tangle free. And so when you cast that, that's not going to. Yeah, obviously. Um, and I can still cast that the way I want to, you know, up tide. You can do, but you'll find it a lot easier with the with the longer rods. Yeah. But when we go out, uh, you know, you use one of the big long rods as well. Yeah, I'm going to have a try. As have I said, go. you know, I'm 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 uh, you know I'm 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 always open to see different styles of fishing. And the thing is, is that you know. Uh, these those lads don't mess about, do they? I know you fish a lot yeah. of competitions yourself as well. Um, but I mean, them lads they know what they're doing, don't they? Yeah. The likes of Ray Barron and Steve Batchelor and, and Brett and that they they, the they know their stuff, yeah. don't they? And um, here's another example. Um, this one's not weighted, they don't always be weighted, it depends, you know, it depends on the state of tide or whatever you want to do. But here's another example, it's glued. So that's a weird boom, that one, isn't it? Yeah, so, so the, is that broken? No, so these these booms are actually the homemade ones. Oh, okay. And if I tell you that many of them, I won't say all of them, but many so of them, many like of the match that. anglers will use homemade booms. They won't, they won't buy the booms. So how would you, how, how, how do you get that wire then? Well, is it like, you have to ask is Paul Hart to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's loads of anglers. Yeah. Down the country, there's anglers that make their own booms because they'll be very interested in the gauge so if you can imagine this has got a different action from that that's twisted one so yeah, it's, the it's, other anglers like colin sales and all that they'll fish with this yeah i mean um colin always uses a five meter rod for example but once again these are these are shop bought ones you can see it's got a different sort of action 
Let's have a look. Yeah, these are similar sort of ones to what I've got. Yeah. At home. Yeah. So and that is that doesn't look that's not lead, is it? No, that one's not. That's lead, just a no. and you do that just to stop that kinking up. Just a bit, yeah. So sure does is right. the general size about the same? Yeah, I think that's a four. So that's about four foot. That's a, I think that's a 40, uh, 45 centimeter gap. Okay. So, oh, it's is it that precise? Yeah. So oh, so that doesn't touch that. Some, Roughly, yeah, is that what it's about? That's what it's about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and you always fish one down, so one down below the lead. No, no, because this the lead is on there. Yeah, but that hooks down below that lead. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the idea is yeah. for it to lay flat. The is idea it? is to lay flat on the on the bottom. Yep. That's yep. The, that's the key to it. So right? when I'm up to so if I'm up tiding with that and I've cast that out yeah. and that's that's in there like that, as say, let's do it like this, in there like that. But will that will that line not be held up like that then? No, because you've got to let have a, a long enough line line to, to make sure that, that and then the, so what malcolm's on about so do you tighten that down yeah, you only you're not tightening down to the ledge you're only just taking over a bit of the i see to, to, to get, i see so once that slack once the fish takes that then that that lot that rod will release yes so it's not like it's it's uh so i so that's not tight You've not wound up tight, so that's holding no, that tight. Because, because you're holding the slack. You're holding the slack. Right. And you mentioned that amount of line. And I said to you, that, that 25, 30. So that's why you're not going to get that bite like that on an uptied rod. You It'll still, generally go slack. You will, stick, you will get those bites as well. Yeah. And sometimes, good little tip, sometimes if you're getting a bite like that, especially with a two hook rig, sometimes you're getting a little bite, nothing really occurring, just open the bait arm, let out another four or five foot of line. Yep. Just close the bait arm again and just let it. If it's a, you might have one fish on that way, you get your second fish on, like that. right? Um, right, but it also it's not just, I mean, obviously, what we're talking about here with the big loop of line, we're talking about when the tide's running, yeah. But with these rigs as well, you can cast them during slack water and move them a little bit. So, so in your experience, then, that you would, if you're up tiding, you would use uh. A, a pattern oster and you would have like a clipped uh, trace you know so that yes. your lead yeah. and not like what i've got here of a flowing trace that's what i would but but i'm not you know, i'm not saying it's wrong no i'm not saying it's wrong it's not but it's not my not my preference but with, with this sort of setup on a on a on a match setup you would you'd have two of these rigs ready one of them you clip on and, and go put the rod down forget the rod yeah, I, I personally make sure my clutch is set nice and loose in case a tope or a or a smoothie picks it up. Nice and loose, put that down there. Forget the rod. Sort my sort my set my next rig out. Keep my head down and, and, and get the next get, get all baited up. Then we decide in ten minutes. Wind that one in. Hopefully there's a fish on there. Bring that in. Unclip. Do with the fish. You got to, you got to return yep. the fish. Return yep. the fish. Unclip. New one on. Cost that. Yeah, I mean, I do when I'm when I'm tote fishing and when I'm well, most of my fishing, if I do do it um, on anchor or whatever, um, I I do have my rigs, so I have one ready for when I come bring that one in. I'll clip the next one on and let it go down. So, so normally I'll, I'll I'll have that done anyway. But I mean, I'm not re uh, you know I'm not looking at a um a, a match angle side no, of things. No, you know, so it, it it's it's more really of just sort of showing people the best ways to do this this uptiding yeah, I mean, and I'll, the different rigs. You I'll know, just, this is this has been my experience with it. Um, um, but just for if, if guys can get their head around it, just just for general fishing, not 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 match fishing, just general fishing, coming coming um, on a charter boat, learning these techniques, in my opinion, you get far more fish. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't appreciate just how important the scare factor is. The scare factor, you know, around the boat, whether it be the anchor, the chain. That's not to say you shouldn't look under the boat. Of course, you should look under the no. boat. No. But. I mean, I sometimes, if I'm uh, place fishing or things like that, I mean, obviously you're doing that on drift, but if I'm on anchor and I'm doing, I'll try and trot, lift the rod up to yeah. try and trot the lead down. Yeah, to... I, I, we do a, do a whole different video on place fishing. <laughs> yeah, we will do. Because we do, a, do an anchor as well. Yeah. Not just yeah. on drift. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just, just, if guys can start to think about it, but you can't, with a standard boat rod, 
and a metal plate, you can't cast away from the bat. I watch guys try to do it, and it's it's dangerous. Yeah. And yeah. Um, on on a charter boat. As on such. a charter boat. Yeah. yeah. What you do on a private boat is obviously very very different. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah um, so I mean, you know, as I said, I've just been having just issues with. Uh, a couple of the rigs that I tried uh, that were bought, I mean, um, from my tackle shop. I mean, Martin seems to have quite a bit of success, but yeah. they just seem to be hooking up, catching up um, whenever I do, and perhaps I'm not rigging them up right. And as I said, it's just the sort of the science of it with the up in of understanding. And so when you're casting, so yeah. I've cast up there yeah. uh, in the last video I did, you told me about once you've casted, you, you're better off to put the tip of the rod I, into yeah. the water and I, let I, the I'll tide. I'll do it as a habit because I'll do it as a habit because if, you know, um, if the wind's blowing the wrong direction or you know, whatever way it's coming from, it can take out loads and loads of line off yep. uh, and it's not what you want. You want to be in control of it. So I cast underarm put the rod tip down and let the tide take, take so the put bow. the rod tip in the water yeah and let, yep. and let that take the bow of line line out and then you line. can sometimes feel that leg go you down should, you should not every time but you should be able to feel it hit hit the bottom and then think i want at least as much to line out again as what you've cast as, as what you've cast. at least that out again as what you've cast and what's gone down to the bottom there let that at least that much again so it's a lot it's a lot of line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that way you get your bow, and that way it's low. But will flat. that lead still be up there? It should be. Yeah. yeah. It does. It, it's, so the, the trick is to pick the rod up and then wind really fast until you until you hit hit the lead. You, right. you feel the lead. You can feel where the fish is on there, or you break it out. Yeah. And, but I mean, they, that 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 technique with that, like Malcolm showed us, and those rigs that you have, it's. It's not a bolt rig, but it's almost like that. They will hook themselves as shelves. such, yes, yeah, won't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah th there's no striking or anything like that. Um, no, and that and that the these like you say these leads here perfect, that, yeah. that Malcolm made. I mean, that's what's that? Five Four? ounces. Five ounces. Yeah, yeah. See, and I thought, you know, like if you're fishing a seven metre tide, which is a big tide here, yeah, um, or biggish tide here, I thought you'd want eight yeah, ounces. That will cover most most situations. Yeah. Maybe some deeper water where you and, want to go. Uh, do you use a breakaway, or would you just use these? I tend to use them, but yeah. um, you can you can use a breakaway. There's nothing wrong with all the, the, it. Would all work. All yeah. the principal work. I wanted to show you a pyramid lead, reverse pyramid, but I don't have one. But, no, but, but well, we can cover that in a yeah, in can, another one. You can twitch them along the bottom. So I mean, water. hopefully the next time, um, John. Obviously, we're in uh, fifty-three mile an hour winds today, and uh, we needed to get the John's going away on holiday, and uh, I just needed to get the content. But I sort of said I'd do a video just to try and show you. I mean. Uh, I'm certainly no expert at up tiding, but you know I just want to try and learn different ways. And I mean this match, this match game is a whole new um, angle for me uh, that I want to learn um, and and see how it is. As I said, we did try and uh, get me on one of his trips, but uh, it, they. You know, sometimes they're a little bit cagey, these match anglers. Uh, they don't want you knowing everything. But I'll try and, and sweet talk a couple of them and see if I can come on and just see how they fish. And uh, I want to learn how to uh, use these bigger rods. But, yeah, hopefully you'll get something out of it. It was more about the rigs, the casting, and the other bits and pieces. And just, just so... Uh, you can show but um what i'm gonna do is the next weather window when john gets back um hopefully we'll get out just me and him and uh, we'll go out and we'll do uh, a little video on uh well hopefully catching a few you can show me the under yeah the under casting i'm sure i'll be allowed to do my you do it overhead well. casting yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know if i'm yeah, careful yeah. and and uh we'll see see what works you yeah, know and, yeah. and and what difference but i'm really interested in trying these yeah and just a quick one so what for the for up tiding what uh is 30 pound braid fine yeah absolutely yeah. and a 60 pound leader like if they yeah. you know if you because you can't probably can't get that sky blue i mean amnesia or anything yeah. like that i do yeah i mean, I mean to, be, to be fair you know this is this is i would use decent is that my one decent. no because <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've only got two of these left yeah, yeah that's all right but this is the, this is the stuff yeah yeah 
All right, well, that gives us uh, some idea about what's going on. But, yeah, I hope you get something from the video. Um, yeah, and as I said, next time, hopefully, me and John will be going out and uh, uh, testing out these, these things we've talked about, these techniques. Yeah. Thanks very much for watching Manic Fishing. At the end of the video, you'll see a prompt for another video. Watch that one. That'd be good. Um, and then you'll see my Manic Fishing logo. Hit that logo. That's my subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks, John, for, Cheers, for showing us. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.